welcome back we will uh, look at the regression error analysis so we'll go back to the notebook uh, error analysis so we have done the model building the full model and we are getting an accuracy of 0 0.0.91 r square and um, at an average RMSC is about 0 0.61 that means 61,000 plus or minus upon the prediction of the resale value. Uh, let's look at error analysis. Error analysis is an important step in regression to understand two things, how the errors are distributed um, and where we are getting more error which might give us little bit of insight into um, where the samples might be underrepresented or maybe certain other factors are important in predicting uh, the outcome value. So let's look at error analysis. Uh, to do that, um, we already have uh, built a data frame where we have captured all the errors, the residuals, the EY, right? This is uh, the YI value, actual YI hat and the EI, which is YI minus YI hat. So let's look at these values a little more in detail, how they are distributed. To do that, because it's a numerical feature, we can do uh, a histogram or a distribution plot to understand the distribution of this particular variable itself. So uh, SN dot hist plot YDF3, which is the data frame 3, uh, model 3, the residual. <clears throat> YDF residual. Okay, so here if you can see uh, from the histogram, uh, which on the x-axis shows the residual values that we have uh, the model three uh, gives on the test data, and this is of course the frequency, the count. And you can see this is mostly centering around zero. And uh, as we go to higher and higher residuals and error, the frequency comes down. So most of the errors are well within 0 0.5 to uh, 0 0.5. So fi minus 50,000 to plus 50,000. And there are of course certain cars which has higher errors. So in this case, there are certain uh, uh, overestimation and underestimations. Right. But the frequency of them are very low. So uh, the more um, uh, the dispersion we have the model, that means the more variance in the model. So let's say if we compare two different models where uh, the distribution of the residual uh, is for the one of the model looks like this and the other model looks like this, then the residual two, the model as a higher variance is more uncertain in the predictions. So lesser variance is expected here. And uh, if you also look at uh, the, let's say the SN dot KDE plot, which is um, uh, again YDF3 dot uh, residual. Right. Uh, this looks like a normally distributed. Uh, this is also expected that your day, your errors are normally distributed and centering around uh, zero. Okay, the mean value is zero. Um, this is uh, this is good, and we can also look at the mean value of the residual. Typically, it should be very close to uh, zero. The residual dot uh, mean value comes out to be 4,000, which is pretty good. I'm almost close to zero. Uh, we can also look at the, um, the predicted value of Y or the residual with respect to the actual value. This also gives you some indication into how the residuals are distributed across the perspective of the actual values. Um, so you can look at that. Um, so let's say we can do uh, something like SN dot scatter plot 
and let's say we'll take the y df3 and x will be your actual value and y will be the predicted values so we look at the distribution of this uh, so here if you see um, the uh, if all the dots are on a single line on a diagonal line that means uh, if the actual value is y the predicted value is also y the actual values is 4 and the predicted value is 4 and so on and so forth right then uh, there is no error and all the dots will be in the same single line but here of course you can see a variance around the line which is of course because there are errors out there the larger the variance then uh, the model has a more uncertainty in prediction the higher is the error uh, the lesser the variance of course is better i mean for example if you see this particular um, uh, test data data point the actual predict actual value of the car is about 7 lakhs probably and uh, it told them uh, the car would be sold somewhere around 5 or 5.5 lakhs so there is an error in that uh, so this, this this plot also gives you some insight into how the uh, errors are how the predicted values look with respect to the actual values and we can see probably uh, cars which are less than six or seven lakhs less than that uh, the variance is a little low but higher than that the variance seems to be a little higher um, which we can again observe from uh, comparing uh, the residual with the actual so in this case we'll get another scatter plot and we we'll look at the actuals and we'll also look at the residual instead of the Rated values and here uh, if you look at the the spectrum of actual values from starting from 2 lakh to 4 lakh to 10 lakhs how the residuals are distributed again uh, typical expectation is they should be randomly distributed across uh, zero um, so of course most of them if you see here are between probably um, 0.5 to minus 0.5 but some of them are uh, beyond that and if you can observe it here keenly um, there are uh, the higher positive residual values for the, the actual values of the car which are beyond 6 lakhs probably right very few negative but here uh, there are more lesser than that more negative values of the residual so because our residual is nothing but our error uh, which is e i is equal to y i minus y i hat um, so this becomes negative uh, when the predicted value is higher that's the overestimation so in this case you can see this is uh, we are doing a overestimation of the car typically for cars which are less than six lakhs and the positive values so these are basically underestimation okay. otherwise the values are mostly okay so there are a few observations but too many observations if you see uh, then of course there is uh, something wrong with the model you have to go and uh, look at uh, how to fix that uh, for example if it's overestim uh, underestimation that means uh, we are probably missing some information here because we are not able to estimate the price of the car, the recent price of the car uh, appropriately. So residual analysis is a very important step uh, that has to be done after the model is built to understand the distribution of the residuals. Uh, we can also look at uh, independently rather than looking at overall uh, the distribution of the residuals, we can also look at uh, uh, and compare across categories for example across models so how the errors distribution for swift with respect to let's say sias or with respect to balino and all that do they uh, look same across all the models or that differ 
Uh, you can also do that for petrol, diesel, or automatic transmission or location. But in this case, let's look at uh, just one uh, model and how to do that. So to do that, what we have to do is we have to um, join this data frame, which contains only three values, right? Actual predicted and residual um, with the actual X test data, uh, not the encoded one, the actual X test data. So what you have to do is, so um, if you look at X test index, right? So these are the uh, test data that we have uh, in the, uh, these are samples that we have in the test data set. And we will take these indexes from the cars DF. So you can say X test df equal to cars df cars dot index dot is in this so we'll take from the original data so what we'll do is we will uh, take those records from the original cars df so that we have still have the the original categorical values uh, retained in that only those samples that's in the test data so let's go back and do that um, so we are uh, filtering out all the records from the original cars data set and those records which are there in the test data so this will actually filter out <coughs> and uh, if we look at this now x test df dot head let's say first few records um, and this is of course in a different sequence uh, because this is randomly created and this is of course the sequence now so 0 1 9 14 15 18 these are different indexes and if you look at the shape of this also this will be 202 which is correct that many records we have in the test data now um, the ydf ydf uh, v3 and if you look at the first few records ydf3 right this is again again test data um, but they are in different order. So what we'll do is we'll sort them, these ones, and basically join with this. So let's do um, sorting of this YDF3. Equal to YDF3 sort index. It's as simple as this. And then look at the YDF3, let's say, dot head. Right. Now you can see uh, YDF is also sorted in the same order 0, 1, 9, 14. Um, and we will now go ahead and join these two data frames. How do we join? We can say X test DF equal to X test DF join ydf and let's look at the first few record ah. so uh, we have made a mistake this should be ydf underscore three um, and now if you look at the first 10 records, yeah, this looks correct. Uh, now if you see uh, the data, the original data set and the um, actual predicted and residual value are now uh, joined. So you can compare the residual values with respect to any specific categorical feature. Maybe it's location or fuel type or model and all that. 
um, of course this particular column is repeated price and actual which are same uh, and then what you can do is uh, we can create the distribution of residuals across different models and for that we can uh, create a box plot remember um, we can use a box plot when you are comparing the relationship and try to understand uh, the relationship between two variables uh, when one of the variable is categorical and the other one is basically a numerical so sn dot uh, box plot data is now x d test d f and x equal to the categorical feature in this case the model because we want to understand the distribution by different models and the y will be your uh, residual and we can uh, always change the figure size the plt figure size equal to let's say we make it 12 and 4 yeah that's what's good so now if you look at um, the distribution across different models the error distribution right? uh, of course the smaller the box plot the lesser the variance more certain about the predictions but if you can see uh, the mean error for Atiga is about zero which is perfect and same thing for swift uh, but Waganar little less that means uh, we are doing um, little overestimation for Waganar uh, and this is positive the median value uh, you can see uh, some we are uh, specific models that uh, the error is zero but certain models we are doing uh, overestimation and some we are doing underestimation and some of the models are very high variance like a CS has a very high variance, right? Uh, the for twenty five percent of the cars in CS, uh, the overestimation. So this should be actually underestimation. So EI equal to YA minus YA hat. So the when it's positive, the actual values are larger, right? And we are underestimating. So CS cars we are underestimating for almost 25% of the cars. More than that actually, almost 50% of the cars. And uh, uh, and the values are quite high. So the uh, underestimation is almost like 50,000 to uh, 2 lakh rupees. And so on and so forth. Uh, we can also look at like uh, uh, we can actually go ahead and check for example what is this uh, outlier value here specific value why this particular car has been um, underestimated uh, and we can uh, look at specific values for example you can say filter out x test df where x test df and we know the model is uh, rich right and then uh, we will only look at the specific residuals of let's say rich model and um, if you want to look at this particular value then um, sort values by the residual right and you can do ascending equal to we want to look at the higher value isn't it it's a false and look at the first let's say two values so you can see this particular model rich the residual is 1.64 uh, which is up for this particular value and we have um, underestimated 
the actual uh, price of the car uh, the resale value is 2.5 lakhs and the car estimated to be sold at 0 0.85 85000 rupees so there is of course a significant underestimation and the reason it might have happened is because uh, though it's a uh, a 9 year old car and is driven by almost uh, 150000 kilometers 1.5 lakh kilometers so the estimation went almost uh, down uh, which of course we can also do a little more detail we'll look at uh, model explanation um, and so this uh, you can also look at specifically which particular uh, test data has given more error and why uh, and if it's an outlier then probably to deal with that uh, or if any significant information missing of course uh, this residual analysis has to be done always with respect to the uh, business domain knowledge so always people who understand the domain uh, you, you consult uh, those people when you're doing the error analysis we can also look at uh, a specific uh, segment for example if you remember we had done here saying that cars which are beyond six lakhs typically has uh, been underestimated right and which car are those then we can uh, do a specific uh, box plot let's say uh, we can utilize the same code here but in this case we we'll only look at the cars uh, whose actual values are more than six lakhs let's say right and if you do the plot here and you can see um, probably CRs um, is overestimation right except CRs I think all these cars I think Swift typically has a, a higher uh, mean value in the in terms of residuals you can also see uh, the desired uh, cars have a very high um, error here positive value underestimation is about almost 1.5 lakhs and you can see only single line here because um, they're probably not enough samples for the desire that could be one of the reasons uh, we can always go and look at uh, how many uh, cars we have for desire so in the cars df cars df dot uh, model equal to desire right you can look at the shape we have only 24 cars which probably is not sufficient so we may have to go and collect more data about uh, desired cars so that brings us to the end of error analysis and i have given in a participants exercise here uh, in which we want to understand little more um, about the predictions the model coefficients and the error metrics uh, when we change this uh, this train and test uh, set so what i have done is we have uh, taken a data set and we have split that into train and test so this is the of course the uh, original data set and we have split that into uh, train and test and then we have built a model here and measured our accuracy or error on the test data so all the metrics now uh, whatever the accuracy that we got for example in our case we got accuracy of 0.91 r square value or rmsc comes out to 0 0.61 uh, thousand now how these values 
Of course, these are not absolute values. Moment I change little bit in train and test, these values would vary, but how much they are varying. So what we do is we need to uh, repeat the whole process by taking different train set and different test set and rebuild the model and measure R square and RMSC and see how much of these values are varying. If they vary a lot, so that probably um, indicates the model is not robust enough. Right? So to do that, uh, first what we'll do is we will sample multiple train test set and one other way to do is by simply changing the uh, random state. So when you go back and look at the uh, train test split here, Uh, when we encoded the data and uh, split the data. Uh, so if you change the random state, let's say 40 to let's say 50 or 60 or some other number, uh, the samples that will go to train and test would differ. So that will create different train and test set. Right? So as an exercise, uh, I would ask you to experiment with that and look at that. And of course, we will come back and explore an advanced validation strategy called k-fold cross validation strategy in the later sessions uh, leading from here uh, how to actually simulate the whole process of rebuilding and uh, recalculating these matrices to get a deep understanding of uh, not only how good and bad the model is how robust the model is because changing few samples here and there should not significantly change the model's behavior, right? Uh, so take a different uh, training set and build model and measure the model accuracy. But how to sample different training test set? One is to change the random state. So from the 40, let's say you change it to 42 or 50 or 60, whatever. So do this, let's say five times and repeat the whole process for five different random states and rebuild the model and look at the R square value. So that will be a good exercise to do to kind of get a better understanding. And for each one of them, let's say one uh, train test split, let's say split one, what is the R square value, what's the RMSC, what's the second one, what's the R square RMSC, make a note of it. Okay, so that uh, brings us to this uh, particular session. So in the future session, we will look at two important uh, topics. One is model explanation, uh, how to visualize the model explanation and storing and making a, uh, a prediction. So how to store the model and make actually a prediction on the completely new data. We will look at that. See you in the next session.